St. Louis area live, here live in Me Too Music Studios, as we take this edition of St. Louis Area Live with Angie G. Stay tuned, right here on MeTooMusic.com. Ten, nine, nine, eight, eight, seven, 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 seven. 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 The new free to download CD project by Levi Tukin. Including seven new songs all performed on the vocoder. Featuring I Can't Live Without You. I am waiting. I am waiting. Trapped in a maze. Also featuring other new also songs. Featuring other new songs. Two King. Two King. Seven. Seven. Available now for free download at www.metoomusic.com. That's www.metoomusic.com. Get it now. Get it now. It's free. It's free. 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 Yeah. 
He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Megan was off the chain. It was beautiful. The Lord came in. He did his thing. I was so blessed by it. It was off the chain. I got one word to say. Wow. Jehovah You watch the St. Louis area live. Hernandez Union here with Angie G, and uh, she's going to be talking with us for just a few minutes about a servant's heart. And of course, we all know a servant's heart is what you need to sing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about you, Angie. Well, I'm 25, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a woman with a heart after God, just trying to please Him. It's hard being young, but I mean, I strive every day, you know, to That's walk in Christ. So. That's who I am. So how do you, how did you get into this singing thing? What what uh, motivated you in that in that realm? Well, um, I guess the gift was passed down from my mom. My mom sings. My dad plays lead guitar, mm -hmm. and um, I guess God placed that gift in me because of them. I don't know, um, but um, I guess I've been singing since like three years old. Wow. I sang my first solo. My dad played the guitar. Mm -hmm. I stood up on a chair when I wasn't so tall. Right. Um, now we all know that it takes a, 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 a process, a maturation process to get to the point where you are. Now I, I know that you weren't pushed out to the front to begin with or were you? Did you know people actually push you out to sing or, or was it something that just happened? I've always had a passion to sing but as y'all can see I'm really shy. Yeah. So um, I know I, I was led by God so because he led me I did it. I had to be obedient to him. We talked about obedience. What does it take to be an obedient singer? You know, uh, seeing that as you've had to uh, sing for so many different people and, and you had to maybe wait a little while for your opportunity. What is it like to be in that mode of waiting and being obedient? Well, definitely uh, submission, like I said before. Um, and you have to serve before you can lead. So definitely I've served. I feel like I've paid my dues. So Now... What, uh, what groups have you sung with in the past? Who uh, has helped you along the way? Um, well, I think a lot of people know me from singing with Daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I joined that group. I was like 17 years old. That was a while ago. Um, I've, I was an honorary member of uh, JTN Rebirth. I've sang background for a lot of people. I've done a lot of studio work, background studio work. And I've also sang background with God's Chosen. Yeah, and my girls. So what is your role in your local congregation? I'm pastor. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey. to keep the faith. It was quiet. Oh. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> I'm sorry. I sing on a praise team, on a worship team. Yeah. Good, good. So no pastoring, no time soon? Never. No. <laughs> so Angie, let us know who inspired you, who influenced you to be the singer that we see before us today. 
Well, I'm really into um, Christian contemporary music. I like um, Chris Tomlin. I know everybody is familiar with Michael W. Smith. Um, it's a group called, I think it's Flyleaf or something like that. Um, yeah, I really like those types of songs. I love Hillsong. Mm -hmm. I really do. Because I'm a worshiper. Yes. And I really enjoy the music. Angie, now what is are some of the things that you would impart to someone that may be looking at this and say, you know, I want to do what she's doing or the Lord has called me to, to uh, uh, because I have this gift. Uh, what would you, what advice would you give to them, even in the realm of, of being a servant, as we've been talking about? Well, you definitely have to know that that's the direction that the Lord is leading you in. Um, you definitely have to have patience because everything ain't going to happen overnight. <laughs> um, I know I've been patient. God has taught me patience. I mean, I'm not like looking for a record deal or anything like that. I just want to be used by him in any way that he chooses to. So uh, tell us a little bit about the, the songs that you're singing today. I, one of my favorite songs mm -hmm. off of the St. Louis Area Fellowship Project is Word. Uh, tell us a little bit about that song and how that came about. You wrote that song, right? Amen, yes. All right. Tell us a little bit about it. What inspired um, What inspired Word? Well, I'm working with a guy named Real. Michael Whitfield um, and he produced the song and we kind of collaborated together writing it um, he came up with a concept and he gave me the music and I think I took it home and I wrote the verses and um, I mean it's just for anyone like I guess I can use me as, a, as an example I would always hear people say things about me and I mean I would feel down and out but um, I don't know, people are always going to have things to say, but when God speaks, you find comfort, you find peace, you find rest in Him, so definitely, um, I pray that that song encourages a lot of people. Right here on St. Louis Area Live, we just love to present great artists like this that are just on the cusp of being uh, who God wants them to be, not necessarily who the world or society would have them. So, uh, Angie, we thank you so much for, thank you for joining us on me. today. And we've got another song coming up from you. And uh, before we let you go, is there anybody you want to say anything to? Your background singers, perhaps? <laughs> well, I do want to thank everybody that's been helping me on my little journey. Um, I got some new people helping me out. I have Tamika Green. I have Tamika Green, I have my good friend Chastity, um, and one of my church members, I'm sorry, our praise team members at church, Andrea, um, have Brian Harrison, he helps me from time to time, he gives me a very hard time, but he helps me, I have Andrew Bethany in his absence, I have Mike Pugh, Mike Mike, and um, of Surface Deep, um, I want to tell my mama I said hi, and I love her, and my daddy. Yeah. Yeah, we love mom and daddy. Yeah. I love my mom and my daddy. That's right. Oh, my church, yeah. Man, I got a great pastor. I love my pastor so much. Leonard H. Barber. I belong to Communion Church Ministries, Cool Valley, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, yeah, and he's great, great teaching, worship based church. So, yeah, I love my church. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, here on St. Louis Area Live with Angie G. I'm Hernandez Union. We'll see you again. B2 Music Magazine, the magazine designed for the St. Louis area believer. 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 Visit us at www.metoomusic.com. That's www.metoomusic.com. That's the Me Too Music Magazine. There are believed to be about 38,000 Christian denominations in existence today. With all of these different denominations come a whole lot of different beliefs and practices. I understand that even some of the apostles had their differences, but the root of their message was still Jesus. Why are there so many denominations? There are still Baptist churches that women cannot be in the pulpit. They, if, they, if they say they, they're called to preach, they have to preach down on the floor. They think you're going to hell. Oh, uh, for what? Oh, uh, because you don't speak in tongues. The minute that you say, I want salvation, it's in the world. We get to a place where we argue about and almost like carve an idol out of a point. 
out of one line, Acts 238. There's so many denominations because we couldn't agree on the methodology. The Bible is wrong. I think a denomination is something that man has made. I believe that the water baptism in Jesus' name is right. We were taught that no, we're not saying that we're going down in Jesus' name. You go down in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. There was no, there was no, there was no confusion because Jesus simply told them, go ye therefore and baptize in the name. Well, they knew what his name was. We don't know what his name is. You know, if you're going to argue with us about Jesus, right. then we shouldn't be there. In this age where we have so much information coming at us, we have to water down and simplify the gospel like we're all kindergartners. You have to check the origin of things. You have to find out where things come from. It's almost like a slave mentality. I'm going to tell you something to control you and I'm gonna teach you this to keep you controlled people that say we believe in Jesus but we we don't some can work some believe in Jesus but you can't wear pants you can wear makeup you can do this you can't do that you can smoke doctrinated to believe all these years it seems to me Lord somebody's right and somebody's wrong I don't think uh, denominations at this point uh, is uh, making God happy people are going to question yes. you know what we're saying yeah and you have to be able to scripturally back up yes. what it is that you believe in. And, you know, we ultimately have to lead people to Christ. And if we can't do that, then we shouldn't be here. Because of all of these differences, I'm confused. Don't we all believe in Jesus? He'll never be Then God intervened 